Good morning. It's Tuesday the 22nd of February. I wonder if you've ever read the small print. Have you lost count of the number of times that you've been told to do so, yet in reality you just can't face it? Whether it's a policy document through the post or online, or the user agreement when you install some new software on your computer. How often do you go straight to the back page of the document, or scroll as quickly as you can to the bottom of the dialog to find the box to tick that you agree with all the terms and conditions? How many times have you actually read all that information word for word? Doing so would assume you have great eyesight to read the ridiculously small print, that you have a dictionary with you to look up all the words that are incomprehensible, and it assumes that you haven't got completely bored as you don't have any idea what it is they're really trying to say. In recent years, there's supposedly been an effort to make things clearer and easier to understand. The plain English campaign campaigns against gobbledygook, jargon and misleading public information. They make awards each year to highlight gobbledygook. Take, for example, last year, something from the Pensions Dashboard Programme. It reads, with our procurement of the principal digital architecture underway and further work taking place on developing an onboarding strategy, we are in a position to add further detail to this timeline to enable industry to prepare for connecting with the dashboards ecosystem. We have also undertaken invaluable market engagement on the identity service to support the final development of requirements prior to going to tender. What on earth is all that about? Thankfully, we don't need to understand it, but it does raise an interesting question of whether we have the same issue when we talk about our faith. We can be prone to slipping into language that may mean much to us, but nothing to those outside of the church. After all, what is soteriology or eschatology? Do I need to know those words? Does it make me a better Christian if I can use them in my conversations? Absolutely not. We can complicate our faith and make it incomprehensible to others. There is a place for religious jargon, and sometimes we can appreciate, for example, the words of creeds that have stood the test of time. But if we don't understand them, how does it help us? If we had to give an elevator pitch to explain something succinctly in the time it takes to get the lift to its destination, that is, say, 30 to 60 seconds, or 75 words. If we had to use that time to explain what our faith meant to us, what words would we use? Probably not the complicated theological language, unless that's your preference, of course, but probably simple heartfelt words. St Paul gives us his example in the book of Corinthians. We proclaim Christ crucified. It is the message of Christ, the power and wisdom of God. Yes, of course, that would need more expanding in further conversation. But in that short message is the heart of belief. I wonder, can we learn from that? Why not give it a try today? Time yourself for 30 or 60 seconds. Or try writing less than 75 words and see how you get on. How simply can you share your faith and what it means to you and what difference it makes in your life? Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the gift of words, written and spoken. May we always choose to communicate simply and clearly, so that others may hear the good news of the Gospel. Amen.